really honestly ask yourself if you did not know you were supposed to be looking for fake items in that photo, would you have spotted them? So let's do a thought experiment. I want you to pretend that you're an insurance company and I promise this will get more interesting than that sounds initially. Well, as an insurance company, you rely on photos to determine how much money to give someone uh, whose property was damaged. So before and after pictures, before the damage and after. Well, what if someone could create a perfect yet entirely fake photo of the property in their home and maybe even property that doesn't exist before the damage that you have to compare to the after damage photos? Well, you see, that's where AI comes in. Advanced AI technology can now generate images that look as real as genuine photographs, which could potentially be used for fraudulent insurance claims. We've already seen shallow fakes being used for that, like this here. Well, so today we're gonna actually make a deep fake photo using Adobe Photoshop and generative AI. And after that, we're gonna talk about how digital forensics is responding to these challenges. Adobe Photoshop today has generative AI built directly into the program. So you can literally select an area of an item and either change it and or create something that's not in the original photo at all. What we're about to see is me doing that through a process of about 40 minutes to create a bunch of items in this home. So first, here is the before picture of what we have without anything done to it. Uh, let's go through the process and see the work done in very fast motion. And then when we're done with that, we're gonna look at the after picture and have a discussion. So in about 30 minutes, we have taken a real photo and using generative AI, we have added a bunch of items that did not exist in the original picture and we have changed some of those items uh, to make them look more expensive that were already in the picture to begin with. Well, let's go through one by one so I can show you every item added and you can look at them and make a determination for yourself. Does this real? Does this look fake? Would I have spotted this if I wasn't looking for a fake to begin with? So we're gonna look at the before and after in just a minute, but first we need to talk about what is pre-loss condition. We well, see pre-loss condition is the state of an insured's property or item before it was damaged or lost in an event covered by an insurance policy. You see, it's essentially a snapshot of how the property or item looked and functioned before an incident occurred. You see, insurance companies use this information as a reference point to assess uh, the extent of the damage and to determine the appropriate amount of compensation to be paid uh, to a policy holder. See, when a policy holder files an insurance claim, the insurance company will send an adjuster to evaluate the damage and compare it to the pre-loss condition, or they can use photos uh, like we're looking at here. See, that comparison helps them calculate the amount of money needed to repair or replace the damaged property or item, uh, taking into account factors such as age, wear and tear, and general maintenance. And you see, real photographs can be extremely helpful in establishing the pre-loss condition of a property or item. 
Photographs provide clear visual evidence of the condition of the property or item before the loss occurred. By comparing pre-loss photographs with post-loss photographs, insurance adjusters can more easily identify the extent of the damage and the repairs or replacements needed. But as we've seen here, this generative AI technology presents a real challenge to insurance companies and adjusters in the context of pre-loss condition documentation. So once again, you are an insurance company, remember, and you have insurance adjusters. And you are asking your insurance adjuster to look at this photo, look at the items in the photo, and to make an estimation on the value of those items so you can determine what it would take to get that client back to pre-loss condition. As you have seen, we have added phones and tablets and computers, designer purses, jewelry, and fancy looking items all throughout that house. How much do you think this would impact that total estimate? If you were a fraudster, would you consider that extra money worth 30 minutes of your time? I think the answer to that is an easy yes. And that's why insurance companies and adjusters have to be on the lookout these days for this type of manipulation. So now we're gonna look at the before and after images. I'm gonna spend about 15 seconds on each one so you can really soak them in. I want you to soak in that original one and then I want you to see the edited one where I've added those items Really honestly ask yourself, if you did not know you were supposed to be looking for fake items in that photo, would you have spotted them? If you're an insurance professional, you know fraudulent claims supported by manipulated or fake photos could be a huge problem. So how can digital forensics help? What does a digital forensics expert do to analyze photos to determine if it's fake or if it's real? One of the first things an examiner would do would be to look at the photo's metadata. Now, metadata is data about data, like metacognition is thinking about thinking. You can think about metadata like the nutrition label on the back of a can. Uh, it's gonna tell you about the contents of that can, what ingredients are in it and so forth and nutrition information, but you can't taste the soup in that can. You can't smell it or feel the texture of it on your tongue by reading that label. It's giving you information about the contents. Well, when it comes to a digital file, missing or inconsistent metadata can be a red flag that the photo has been tampered with. There's also software that's designed specifically for analyzing photos to look for areas uh, that would show tampering or manipulation uh, by a person or by an artificial intelligence. These include things like error level analysis. In other words, looking at a photo uh, and seeing different areas of compression or visual artifacts that would allow you to see that a particular section of that photo had been altered, like creating a briefcase where there was none uh, or a necklace or a piece of art like we've looked at today. Experts also use their knowledge of lighting and shadows. If we see shadows pointing in the wrong directions or unnatural lighting on certain objects, that's a sign that the image could be a composite of multiple photos blended together by AI or by a person uh, or the creation whole cloth of an item like we did in our example. And examiners also looking for things like uneven edges, strange pixel patterns, uh, strange patterns period, and different elements that don't quite blend together realistically. Now, as the technology to create these deep fakes becomes more sophisticated, so does the technology used to spot them. And that's also a tool available to forensic examiners where we can run uh, these photos through AI and deep learning models specifically trained to detect manipulation. You see, these programs learn to recognize subtle artifacts and inconsistencies that are consistent in an edited photo uh, that may not even be obvious to the human eye, especially an untrained human eye. And of course, there's always reverse image searching. So if we took that original photo and put that into a reverse image search to try to find similar photos to it, and we saw that before and after, let's say our before this time we pulled from the internet, that after photo, the one we edited is the one we submitted as a claim. Uh, now we could say, no, that wasn't your home. First of all, definitely wasn't your items in the edited photo, but we found that picture online and it couldn't have been you. You could also see that uh, being utilized in damage, like physical damage or vehicle damage or the rest where someone, or roofing damage, for example, uh, where someone could submit that and say, this is my house, this is my roof, when it actually was something they pulled from the internet. So you're an insurance company, so why does this all matter? Well, for you, the cost of paying out fake claims based on manipulated evidence can really add up. 
And it's not just about the money. Frosters who get away with it once may be emboldened to do it again, which puts a strain on the whole system. So even if you're not in insurance, let's say you're just like me and the most you knew about insurance before I got in this industry was I needed it for my car. I understand that every time a froster is successful, it raises rates for all of us. It's an ongoing challenge to stay ahead of frosters and manipulators. But armed with the right tools and techniques, forensic experts are working hard to keep us all a step ahead. Thanks for watching. And remember, digital evidence is everywhere.